Hello and welcome to vlog number 208. Now this week it's finally starting to realise that we're pretty close to Christmas. Uh, outside the snow is falling which is very awesome. We haven't had all that much. There's been quite a lot further north in the country but at least this is the first snow we've really had for a couple of years. Uh, and I also the, uh, this week am releasing on Tuesday a video with me wearing a, a uh, Christmas hat. <laughs> so you can look forward to that. Uh, so yeah we're all very excited for the beginning of December um, and getting the trees up. But that's not all that's going on here and obviously this is quite a, a good vlog, we've got a lot done. Uh, started a new project with the TCU Challenge, worked on some other bits and pieces, worked on some Christmas decorations etc. Uh, I've also done quite a lot of painting and this is a time when I give the shout out to my Let's Finish the Year Strong Challenge. Um, I'll put on the screen now the little flyer that I put together. If you want to get involved just set yourself a simple challenge, pop me an email, leave a comment in here, the email address is on the flyer um, and try to achieve that by the end of the year, by the 31st of January. And now we're putting together a summary video of all the pictures I've been sent uh, uh, sometime early in the new year. Now we're about halfway through from when I started. I'm on 74 out of 100 so I'm doing really well. I've really smashed it and hopefully I'll get those final 26 done in the next 30 or so days. So yeah it's been a really nice challenge for me uh, and there are various people including Roto who has sent me 270 pictures. <laughs> so thanks mate uh, who are really getting into it. Uh, and if you're one of those and you haven't yet sent me an email don't forget Feel like you've got to wait until the very end you can send me an email at any time I'll just collate all the pictures uh, and put them together in the video anyway there's a long intro uh, I hope that you really enjoy this video I really enjoyed this week it's been really good I'm feeling really motivated to hobby um, so yeah thank you very much for watching leave me a comment below I'll shut up now see you at the end right so we're back and uh, this is actually part two and it's called shadows and rumors mm. so we left the uh, last game we just caught up with Myrtle's dad um, and he had agreed to allow us to help him search because you asked didn't you? Yeah. So that's where we are. Um, so yeah we're going to continue on with the uh, with the adventure now see if we can find Myrtle or find any evidence of where she might be and uh, yeah we're in the North Moors north uh, in the night which is, is a pretty risky thing to do so it should be quite an exciting day. Are you looking forward to it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Right, so we'll get our game and we'll report back what happened at the end. Right then, so we got through actually all of part two, which I didn't expect to, but it, we did so well and there was we such good... We did the council. We did, there was such good role playing from both of these two, because this week we went a little... Oh, we Rosie, did a little figure. We did, <laughs> but wait a second. This week we did a little bit more open role play, didn't we? There was a little bit more um, free, which is good because I'm learning. Uh, this is the first time I've been doing this and you're also learning and I think it went well. And what say now, Rosie, now, what, what happened, my love? Um, I already told <laughs> <laughs> So, we had a look round and one, uh, who had the idea to look for high ground and a shelter? I think that was Lobelia, wasn't it? So Lobelia had the no, idea to look for, me. no, to look for high ground and the shelter and when we went up there, we found the campsite, didn't we? And we identified that the campsite was made by someone who was very good at bushcraft. So it probably was not Myrtle. However, sit up straight enough. However, from the top of there, you helped me spot tracks leading away, didn't you? And then you were able with an excellent riddle roll to prove that it was long strides and probably someone who wanted us to follow them. And we legged it, didn't we? We've we done a lot of travelling this evening um, overnight because it is dark and it is in the scary north. Um, and we've just, at the end of the session, we've caught sight of a tall stranger on the edge of our vision, right on the, right on the horizon, that seems to be the person we're following. And that's where the session ended, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So did you enjoy that, love? Uh -huh. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. yeah. It's been a good session, fun session. Nice to open it up a little bit. Bilbo is not enjoying it. Bilbo is chuntering along behind saying how tired he is, he's too old for this, and he forgot his handkerchief. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Bilbo is not having the best of times. And he, he thought he'd found some tracks, didn't he? But they turned out to be deer tracks. Because, <laughs> yeah, poor Bilbo. Anyway, <laughs> so there we are. Um, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Um, well, hopefully next week we'll be able to do more open, nice open session. Um, so yeah, we'll be back next week for the next instalment. Really enjoying this. <laughs> what did you say to the camera? Bye. Bye. <laughs> right, so here we have Rosie and Angela and they're tying the strings onto the pine cones. Yay. Yay. So this is the last 
thing to do for how this project and then next time we'll see these will be in a couple of weeks when we put them on the Christmas tree. Are you excited? Yeah, and the sticks. And the, the sticks. sticks are not done yet. No, the sticks are not done yet. They'll be done at some point, I'm sure. Next, Mummy said. Next, okay. So you help helping Mummy nicely. Good girl. Mummy only said to do the gold ones, not the silver ones. Okay, that's fine. It's up to Mummy that, because Mummy is in charge of Christmas trees. I was just in charge of helping you make these. Right, well done. Good girl. Um, I look forward to seeing them on the tree. Well, I have just finished doing the washes on these. So uh, what's left to do is to varnish them, which I'll do probably tonight. I'll probably have to wait and come back down a bit later, just let all the washes dry and then base them. So that's another 24 miniatures and a bunch of Indians, which is really, really cool. Very pleased about that. So yeah, um, really did manage to crack through those over the last couple of days, just stubbornly pushing on and pushing on because I wanted to get them done. I'll put some uh, paint onto Gump. This is just a base coat of the Contrast Wildwood uh, I had a couple of issues with white showing through, with it not wanting to adhere. Managed to get that resolved, thankfully. So yeah, that's the base coat. I'm going to bring it up from that with some dry brushing and some other touch-ups and highlights and edge highlights. And then I'm going to start on the green. So the next thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some um, canvas, potentially, uh, onto these kind of like drapey bits of... Uh, the drapey bits going off the bottom of his, of his arms. You can see on the picture those bits there. I'm going to do that canvas, I think. Um, and um, yeah, the green I've got a good idea for, but I'm pretty tired tonight, so I'm not going to do any more. Oh, that's enough. Uh, I've done enough painting for now. But yeah, just pleased to have got some colours on and I think it's looking great. It's a really easy model to paint. I think it won't take me very long now to get this done. Well, this roof has actually proven to be a little bit of a pain. Um, I'm starting to run out of ways to clamp them down. Uh, I'm very glad that I've got these. And as you can see, the way I've done it is I've extended the little boot and that's meant that they've actually stayed in and have been able to grip it but without that little boot that would not have worked i'm wondering if i'm going to actually be going down to uh, elastic bands for the next section i've only got two more layers to go thankfully uh, so um, i will show you how i uh, um, secure the next two layers but i'm going to leave those to dry for a fair amount of time because yeah um, i don't want them to pop off and they kept popping off which was really annoying but this is pretty much the last thing i think i, I need to do on the build so i uh, thank goodness for that um I, i've had some really nice feedback and some very lovely comments um but i'm still not really feeling the love for it just because i think it looks a bit rough and ready and um, i don't like that i like things to look well done but anyway you know you can't win them all and this is a learning curve and learning process and that's all i've got to say as you can see, I printed out the um, colours, the, the, the photograph from the website, um, and I've also put each of these onto a 28mm base already. Uh, so I'm just going to try that as a different technique as opposed to using the, um, using the tongue depressors uh, at this stage, because now with all my Indians, I've just nearly finished, I'm now going to have to pop them off and glue them to the bases and then do the basing as well. So I'm actually going to, right now, um, as part of my uh, priming, before I do my priming, I'm going to put my milliput on the bottom of these to smooth the uh, little kind of like pudding base um, into the rest of the base. And then I will prime and then I will paint. I have also noticed that one of these dudes, this poor fella here, hasn't got a name. How sad's that? So I have to work that one out, aren't I? <laughs> so yeah, so I'll get the bases finished and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like and I'll get them primed and then we'll get them down to the painting bench. Very cool though, I really, really like these miniatures. I just brought this up, having done the spray painting and the bottom's fallen off. <laughs> so yeah, PVA is not gonna be good enough to stick this to that plastic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my super glue, put some super glue around here um, and stick it back on. However, I might take advantage of that. I don't know if you can see the relative tones. That's quite light, that's quite dark. I might take advantage of that, go and spray paint that again um, because obviously it's not got the greatest coverage and do my dry brushing and then stick it back together. So just take advantage of the fact that it's uh, that's happened. But hey, this one still seems to be relatively solidly attached, but this one is not. So there we are. But yeah, all spray painted. So we'll be able to, uh, be able to get, the, uh, get the painting done on this next. I just started popping these off 
the tongue depressors and lollipop sticks and I remember that I was going to uh, show just how easy it is to uh, remove these. As you can see, it takes no effort at all, just a little bit of the edge of the knife. You may not even need the knife, but I do anyway because I don't like to stra strain the model. And they just pop off. What I've also found is that there is there are names for most of these. Um, I didn't realise and, um, until I saw for the for the good, the bad and the ugly one that these are all named. So what I'm going to do, that one's a bit tougher to take off, I'll get to that next. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the names for these on as well. Now the other thing is, is they actually had colour schemes. Now I don't care. I've done these. I normally follow colour schemes um, for art just because it means that it's easier for me to remember which one's which and easier for me to keep them organised um, because I can have the drawing of the um, I can have the, the, the drawing and the name of the character on my display and then they all go, always go back in the same place. But is what it is. I will, uh, from now on for all of these, I will be continuing to name them and also look at the colour schemes, which will also speed up my painting as well. Anyway, a little bit of nattering. You can see just how easy it is to take these off. And uh, what I'm going to do now is stick these down to some uh, round bases and then milliput, and then we'll be ready to do the basing. So yeah, really nearly finished on this, which is really, really awesome. Well, that is a whole lot of milliput right there. <laughs> so you can see that we've got the uh, Apache, most of the ones on the front. We've got the good, the bad and the ugly which is unprimed, and then we've got a couple of other generic fantasy which I'm rebasing. So I'll let that to dry now, let that to go off, and then tomorrow I'll do the basing, and I'll do the priming, um, and uh, then do the basing after that. And I am, as I said, going to paint on the names for people on the sides, so uh, yeah, I'll be doing that also. Anyway, it took me a little while. Um, this is taking a lot of my hobby time up, but it's really, really nice to get everything based properly. Well, I did respray this and as you can see I've masked it off as well so that uh, um, I wasn't getting any paint onto the gluing surface so yeah pretty pleased with that I'll get that now dry brushed and uh, then we'll finish this up finally so however many literally years since it was since I started well, I didn't end up using anything to hold this down and as you can see some of them are a little bit kind of like not as tight as they should be but it does look like it's on good enough certainly for the quality that this project's turning out to be. So I've got one more round to do, and then that will be, that will be finished. Well, I've just done a test piece for my next stage on, the, on this, and I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to come out on the camera, but I've worked with three colours for now. This one I might come in on last. So we've got a dark grey, we've got kind of like a, a beigey colour, and then a creamy colour. Um, I've got a brush for each, <laughs> um, and so I started with the dark grey, go and then move lighter as you would as you would do, and it's worked out really really nicely. So let's have a down with that. I'm going to show you how I'm going about doing it. So classic dry brush. Take most of your paint off on a bit of paper, and then we're going to come along, and we're just going to go over the top like this. Now this brush is potentially a bit big for doing this but I think it'll work fine. Now I am going to need to varnish this when I uh, I'm going to need to varnish this once it's done because this paint is not really paint for plastic but it will work okay. So we'll get that done. I may not do the whole of the four sides actually with the other colours because this is a little bit tedious to, to film. But we'll just get that finished onto the fourth side. So that's just giving us a little bit of a base. I don't want to cover over the brown too much. I want the brown to still come through as it does on that first test piece. But there we are. So that's that. And I'll just focus on this side from now on on the video and do the rest later. So we just take a little bit more of this kind of like beigey colour. A little bit too much on my brush there. There we are. And that just adds a little bit more depth to the whole thing so it's not too grey and then finally get some of this again take most of it off you can use your hand to test that as well and with the last one I'm coming in with a little bit more of a 
of a circular motion than an up-down motion. And you can see that has brought that to a really nice tone. So I'll do that on all the rest of the walls and uh, see how it looks when it's dried. And if I want to put some more on, I might come on with this final very light color. Creme is what they call it, cream. So I might put that on as well. But for now, I'm gonna finish off all of this. So I've got all of the other pieces to do as well. Um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done and dried, and then we'll start to look at the details. Well, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So what I'm gonna do now is glue on, glue this base back on to the tower section. I'm really, really pleased with how that's turned out as well. Just looks great. So we're just gonna use copious amounts of super glue in a non-scientific method to get it to stick. <laughs> and then hopefully it won't fall off again. And then it's gonna be a little bit of weathering. Now, um, oh, I have done something else as well, actually, once I've done this, I'll show you. I have done one other thing, I did this last night, and that did involve a little bit of weathering. I had some comments, and I get regular comments that I should weather things more, and those comments are absolutely correct. But what I'm gonna do is weight that down and uh, let that dry, so I'll do that off camera. Um, and so what I've done is, first of all, I painted up the uh, metal of the door gate, which looks good. Unfortunately, because I've not done any painting on the inside, it's not primed, which is a shame. So I might need to do a little bit of work on the inside because it's just brown, which is rubbish. But what I have done is I've done a little bit of weathering just with green, uh, and I did it with a green wash, and I think it looks great. So I'm very, very pleased with how that's turned out um, now. So thank you to the people that comment, you need to weather your stuff. I am giving it a go, uh, and I am gonna try and up my game on that. So with, with that done, and with that painted, well, what I will do next is I'm going to put some texture and some grass and what have you around the sides just make that look a little bit less like dry brush cardboard which is what it is at the moment um, yeah we're getting we're getting pretty close to having finished this now which is very very cool so um, I'll get myself ready get some uh, materials for this and bring you along and show you how I'm gonna do the base around the outside of the tower Right, so we're back doing this. I've done it so many times on the channel, but I'm gonna show it again. because I think it's been a little while since I've actually actively shown how I do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some watered down PVA and paint it on to the base, like so. And then I have sifted sand, which is just builder's sand that I've put for a sieve. And we throw that on. We wait one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, whatever, 10, 15 seconds, however long you want to, shake it off and you've got some texture. So I'm gonna do that all the way around the entirety of the base. One of the good things with doing this is it does also help to tie the two materials together where I had the problem with the super glue. I shouldn't have the problem on this one because yeah, I'm gonna have like material coming right up and, and being bound together. Once this is dried, I'll put another coat of PVA over the top to seal it, and then we'll start painting it. So I'll bring you on for both those steps in this. Um, and uh, yeah, so probably a bit later on today, I'll, I'll come back and show you how I could do the sealing uh, of the, of the uh, base. And this m technique can be used for anything, including miniature basing. Uh, so yeah, so this is how you can, you, you can tie your, um, your sand or whatever onto any kind of material. Well, that has dried now, so as I said, as I promised, what I'm going to do is show you how I go about doing this. So first of all, this is my watered down PVA. Just give it a bit of a shake. I forgot to do that before filming, but that's fine. And then what we'll do is we'll take some of this and we'll paint it over the top. So it is literally just sealing in the sand that's here and if you want to, you can add a little bit more at this stage. You can do this over and over again until you're happy with where the sand is up to and, and uh, you've got the, the effect that you're looking for, got the finish that you want. And then, once this is done, we'll start to add some colours, do some... I've got a reddish brown that I think I'm going to use on this, uh, which will take it away from that sand colour. And then after that, we'll put some grass and some flock and what have you on it, and then it'll be finished. So yeah, really simple technique, really effective technique that uh, leaves a really good result once it's all dried and painted and dry brushed and everything like that's done. 
So once this is dried, I'll bring you back for the painting stage. You can see how quick it is because I've just in that short time finished doing the ceiling. So just to say the sand can sometimes move at this stage, particularly if you are a little bit premature, which I might have been there, but you can just shove it back in place with your brush. And then when that's dried, which I probably will now leave until tomorrow, when that's dried, that will be solid. All right, on to the last little bits for this now. So uh, you can see I've painted up and uh, made the base look quite cool. Pretty happy with that. What I'm gonna do now is the final touches. So dim and dimmer actually balance in place. or well, they did. They did when I tried before. There we are. Yes, actually balance in place. So that will give me my nice idea about where things are gonna go. I have some tufts to put down and I also have my weird crystals, small green. So what I'm gonna do now is place some tufts in and some crystals on to make it a little bit more colorful. So I always use tweezers when I'm working with tufts and I also, also always dump, dip it into a little bit of PVA glue just to increase that stickiness. Because sometimes the normal one, oh, let that fall over, that's fine. Sometimes the normal stickiness just isn't enough. So there we are, we've got that in. Um, he will still fit, I think, I hope. Yeah, there we are. So he's coming over that. Um, and what I'm gonna do, and I might need to use super glue for this. I'll let you know if I do. But I'm just gonna drop a couple of crystals in at the front here, into that PVA. There we are. And then I've got one little hole at the back. Put that in the PVA and drop that in place. So when that's dried, I will probably put some water down PVA over it again just to seal everything. And then I will glue your man in place. So I'll bring you back to show what that looks like when it's done. Well, there we are. I have a little bit more to do. As I've set this up, I've realized that I've still not touched up the wooden doors, so I'll get that done, but that won't take long. But I managed to get the roof done. The top bits I ended up using super glue. Um, this bit ended up drying in fine after my last clip, so that wasn't a problem. But yeah, I think that looks much better than I thought it was going to. I got really down on myself with the wall effects, but I think actually it does tie together really nicely. There were some touches I really like. Like I particularly like the silver and the orange and the black. And then as per usual, all the interiors, I'm pretty happy with the interiors, particularly the interior inside here with the awesome picture wall at the end. I think that looks great. So yeah, I'll get some pictures um, for of that. I'll finish up the uh, wood doors and then I think I'm gonna call this done. Oh, time to make a start on the TCU challenge. The theme is scrap and home. So uh, the, it says use whatever scrap you have and come up with something that invokes feelings of home. So what I'm gonna do is gonna make use of this scrap polystyrene and this Pringles can and uh, some of this, uh, which is cladding, uh, polystyrene cladding. And I'm gonna make a home. So it literally is gonna invoke the feelings of home. So I've had this for quite a while and I've planned, this for, planned to do this for quite a while. But what you can see is this has a really cool kind of uh, archway here. It has this, uh, has a circle here which I'll be able to do something with the Pringles cam. And if we look around inside, it also has um, kind of rooms which look quite good inside. So the plan will be to basically clad the outside of this. I'm gonna try and do something really easy, really simple, which you can use any materials and no special tools. So I'm gonna clad the outside of this. Um, and the reason I can claim this is scrap is because I do have quite a lot of scrap pieces um, lying around. So I'm gonna clad the outside of this using scrap pieces of this and other pieces as well to give it a texture. Ooh, I'm so clumsy sometimes. I'm then gonna to have to cut out these rooms because they're upside down. So I'm gonna to have to slice here and slice here. And I'll put a roof over the whole thing as well of that stuff. 
and then I'll put it onto a base of cardboard um, and my current plan for that is to um, kind of draw the um, the, the floor plan on so the way that you'll do it is this will be able to sit onto the base and then if you want to play inside it you can lift it all off and you'll be able to see the rooms as a floor plan so that's what I've got as an idea I don't think it's such a huge project as last time uh, which really did take a long time um, but we shall see I mean these things sometimes are much longer than we than we than we think we can see here that I've got a couple of um, these are a, a slightly proud, so I need to work out what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to cut these off or whether I'm going to build up and build up again. I'm probably going to cut these off, to be honest, and I'll make use of these off cuts um, in another part of the build. But that's the plan. That's the plan. So put a roof over the top, have a little tower, have a little build house, paint it up, do a nice kind of like playable base. And uh, yeah, we'll see how quickly I can get this done. So first thing I'm going to do is gather my tools together to start cutting this out. I don't want to use hot wire. This is bobbly foam. So uh, yeah, we'll see how well this goes. So I will, um, I, will, I will get myself ready and bring you back and we'll get a start. So the key to cutting bobbly foam and not getting it bobbly, and it's not easy, is a long, sharp, thin blade like that and patience. So I won't film all this on camera. Um, or at least if I do, then I'll put uh, music on. But what you're looking at doing is actually cutting. You don't want to force. You don't want to go too fast. It's very similar to balsa wood in that if you try to cut too fast, you'll destroy it. And if you cut at the right speed, you can just see that was very easy. Actually only took two passes, then it won't bubble up. There we are. So that's the key to cutting this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this whole square out and I'm going to cut this whole square out and then we'll look and see what we've got. So let's get to it. I will uh, I'll put some music on and you can, you can watch how it goes. Well, there we are. That went pretty well. Actually, relatively happy. I've got some bobbling, but certainly not too bad. And nothing that won't be solved as I'm doing all of my texturing and what have you and finishing off the project. So, yeah, what we've got is we've got a room with a beam. And we'll be able to put our roof over the top. I managed to cut a doorway out here, which is pretty cool. And I'll have to probably fill that in, but I'm not totally sure. Um, what I'll now be able to do is come along, I'll turn the camera off because it's going to be more of the same, but I'm going to shave down these over, overhangs so that it can sit flat. And that's just going to take a little bit of time, um, but then it should sit flat. So I'm going to do that now and I'll come back, I'll bring it back when I've finished it. When I'm finished doing that, and we'll talk about what the next step is. But already that's starting to really take the shape that I was hoping, a nice big space here. Got a doorway coming in here, got a doorway coming in there, and we've got a doorway at the front here as well. So we've got nice lots of access. And then to the left here, we will, can have potentially another doorway cut in here, which should be, oh, not on shot. <laughs> another doorway cut in here, which should be relatively easy to do, to go into the room, which will have the tower coming off of it. And that um, potentially cut these out as well, or maybe put doorways into these at the bottom here. So, uh, so we can have two small rooms. Um, yeah, I will do some cutting and I'll bring it back when I've, when I've done that and show what it looks like. But all that's done just with a sharp knife and that's the key thing, very sharp knives. Well, this arrived. This being a tent for my longer 3D printer. Now I've had this for months and months and months and I haven't ever even done a test print on it. And so what I've done is I've picked up this tent to keep the dust off it and also to keep it warm. Um, it's very difficult in any building to keep um, things clean from dust, but particularly in ours, it's so big and uh, we've got four dogs, three indoor and one outdoor. So yeah, the dust is a problem. So yeah, this is uh, the official from longer, as you can see, uh, the official tent for the printer I've got. 
Right, very quickly and very well packaged. So uh, yeah, at some point I'm gonna put this together and I'm gonna finish setting that printer up because I never actually finished setting it up. And then I'm gonna see whether I can actually get an FDM printer to print. Now, if I can get this working, then maybe I will go back to and I feel a little bit more confident and comfortable about going back to the Prusa, which is still sat there stuck with a blocked, um, with a blocked nozzle. Um, so yeah, I really like having my printers in grow bag, grow tents, grow bags, not grow bags, grow tents. I have both of my resin printers downstairs in a grow tent and that has a heater in it. So during the winter when it gets cold, I will be able to, um, to print. Uh, this is more for dust control, I think. But anyway, glad it arrived, pretty cool. And uh, at some point I'll get that built and then we'll move back over to that and try to get it actually printing. So I finished painting these last night. Pretty happy with them actually. Really, really pleased with some of the colors and the way it's worked. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm working on the backdrop. So my uh, concept was that this dude is running across. Now the only problem is his legs are in the same position all the time, which is a shame. But uh, other than that, I think this gonna look really nice. Uh, and what I've done is I've gone online and I've printed out a couple of kind of sci-fi backdrops. And I think I'm gonna go with this one. So it'll look like he's legging it across a, uh, a hall. So what we're gonna do, uh, most of this will probably be done off camera, but some will be done on camera. I've got this, which is just an old very flat box, which I think is going to work perfectly for this. First thing I'm going to do is trim down these side tabs and glue this so that that's at 90 degrees. And um, yeah, so that's at 90 degrees. So uh, we'll glue it there and glue it there and that will hold it at 90 degrees. Once I've got that at 90 degrees, what I'll do is I'm going to spray the inside of this silver and then I will trim the white off of the picture and this will get stuck in on a curve roughly like that um, and then what I might do is trim down the front of this slightly so it's not quite so deep and these will be running across like that so that's the plan um, and the one that's going to be is going to be shooting um, I'll put a little bit of a, of a muzzle blast on that as well so yeah, I'm gonna get that done. Um, I'll do, as I said, most of this will be off camera. If there's something that's interesting to film, then I'll film it, but I'll probably get all of the gluing and the spraying done and then bring you back when I'm about to stick the picture on. Hopefully this won't take very long, but uh, let's see. All right, so the sand has dried and the whole tower is looking great, but I am gonna move that off while I'm working on this. This is coming up to the final steps. So we're gonna basically do roughly the same thing. Gonna paint PVA on over the top of the sand and then I have two of my shot board types of uh, flock here which I was just thinking I've had those and I've used those since my first ever foray into doing anything terrain when I was on my uh, working away from home in Belgium I bought that stuff and uh, and the packets in Belgium, you can see. <laughs> so yeah, had these a long time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just scatter some of that on. Um, I will do multiple layers of this and I will build up slightly higher as well around it. So I'll put some like taller weeds up against the edge, but this is just building up the base. And I don't mind if some of the sand shows through. I've decided against painting it basically. Um, I think that having it in a with a slightly sandy base is going to look quite nice. So I'll do that, repeat that process around on the four, other four sides and then um, when that's all dried I'll come in and do another coat of PVA over the top to seal it. So uh, yeah I'll show you what it looks like when that's all dried and sealed. So I'm going to have a look at putting together this and it looks like it's very simple. It literally just has one page instructions. So you've got uh, all the um, <clears throat> all the little lengths of metal, all the poles are labelled. So we're going to have eight labelled number one, eight labelled number two, and eight labelled number three. Here are the joints, and uh, twos go along the front, one goes down the side, and three goes up. So that's going to be one, that's going to be one, that's one, that's one, two, 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 and three, 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 three. So really, really simple how that works. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to bother filming any more of it. I'm just going to show you that I'm going to start in this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Well, that was a little bit of a struggle, but it wasn't too bad. So it's just very tight how the, uh, how the outer goes on around the frame, but the frame's super easy to put together. And um, with a little bit of jiggling, a little bit of brute force and ignorance, I managed to get that to 
to go on. I think I've done it right. Um, it certainly seems to be okay. It opens and shuts fine, but it's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. So I might have to think again where I'm going to have this printer. But at least I've got this now so I can do that thinking, work out where it's going to go, and uh, then I can get the printer running and hopefully can actually have a FDM printer working. I'd really like one. So I've got loads of stuff that I want to print on FDM. Uh, I've had stuff for years that I want to print on FDM and I've just never managed to get my printers to be reliable. So hopefully this will kick me into gear and then I'll have two FDM printers going and I can print loads of stuff. I've got stuff for Rosie, stuff around the house I need to do. It's not all hobbying, but yeah, I just need a printer that works. All right, here we are. This is what I'm going to use for a base. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off these because this is going to be far too big even this central bit. So I'm going to cut off the wings on the sides to make it a little bit easier to work with uh, using a sharp knife and as I reach it, as I realise I haven't picked it up and make lots of noise, I have my long safety ruler. It's always important to protect your fingers. So we'll put the safety ruler in there and then cut it out. Safety ruler and a sharp knife is absolutely my preferred method of, of cutting things. So there we are. Of course, if you don't have a safety ruler and a sharp knife, you can use kitchen scissors just as, as well, but you won't get such a perfect cut. So uh, probably gonna be the, the most advanced thing that I use in this whole project will be my, uh, will be my safety ruler. But I did a video ages ago, years ago, talking about the must-have items for a hobbyist, for a hobbyist, and safety ruler was basically it. So if you're going to get into this awesome hobby, get safety rulers that are the correct size for what you're working on. Now I've got really long one here. This is a metre long, and it's superb. Now obviously you may not need one that long. They do smaller ones. I really recommend this Victor brand. They're really sturdy and uh, they have a really large thing to hold your hand behind. So yeah, I really would recommend them. Right, so I cut off the other two wings and then we'll have a look and I'll show you how I'm going to transfer the floor plan onto this cardboard. Right, we're about to do a beard special, which is I've not actually tried this. <laughs> so what you're going to see is me basically using first principles. This should work. Hopefully it'll work, and if it doesn't, then we'll have to think again. So, the idea is, is to paint my some black paint on very thickly over the whole of this. And I need to do this quick, because I do not want it drying. So I need to get it all on before it dries. Now this is probably a good thing that it's winter, and so it's less likely to dry but I still need to put it on quite thick to make sure it doesn't because it's actually quite a lot to paint. So I'm going to get on with this and uh, I'll talk again, put some music on, we'll get this done and I'll talk again when it's done and we'll do the next step. So let's hope this works. Okay, so that's done. What I'm now gonna do is turn this over and press it down onto the cardboard. Like so. And try to get good pressure on all the bits that needs to get pressure on because what I don't want to have to do is put this down again. So some of it needs to bend a bit there because that's a bit short. Right, let's see, shall we? Not bad, but not brilliant because I didn't get the back down. So now I am gonna have to put it back down again. But, uh, yeah, I need to press down back here. Uh, 
There we are. And last but not least, we need to press down in this middle bit. So it's kind of worked. Not perfect. But it'll be perfect enough for me. So I need to get that to press right down. There we are, come on. There it is, I can see it transferring now. There we are. So the only bit that's missing is this bit here, and that actually here isn't isn't long enough. So these are below the level. So I'm going to have to think about something like that I might have to stick some more uh, on there, or I'm, or I'm not sure entirely what I'll do there. But I can do that with a measurement because I've got that. I know is going to line up with that, um, and I can do a measurement. Right, something else hasn't gone quite right. This front bit here. It's going to be all right. This. I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out. If anyone has any better ideas of how to do this, please use the comment section below. You never have too much advice. There we are, that's better. Right, so now I'm going to have to let things dry so that I don't get black paint all over myself like I already have. Um, and that should be enough for me to do what I need to do and then I can use measurements to get the rest of it. So yeah, we'll let that dry and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. That wasn't too bad. All right, box is prepared, pretty pleased with it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to start to glue the backdrop in place. So I'm gonna do this in two stages. I'm gonna glue the bottom first and then once that's dried, I'll glue the top. And the reason for that is, is I'm gonna to need to weight it down to make sure that it stays in exactly the place I want it to. So what we'll be doing is putting a thin strip of PVA along the bottom of the of this sheet of paper I've just printed out a picture and you can see it's already starting to to bow and warp the paper which is why I'm going to need to move relatively fast so we're going to put that down like that try and get it in the center there we are and then when I do this I will lift it up at a nice angle like that. So let's make sure that's straight. It is and central. And then I'm going to weight it down hmm. like that. Let's do that at an angle and hope that it holds in the middle. There we are. So I'll leave that overnight and then in the morning I will glue the other side. I'll turn it over, glue the other side and uh, then we'll be nearly done on this which is really really cool oh well that's worked really really well and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to stick the chaplains down so on this one just use some pva glue and stuck a little bit of holofill on and that is it's his gun smoke kind of coming out of his gun and what i'm going to do now is glue these on with super glue in each position so i'm going to have them about Coming a little bit towards your view is the idea. And I'm going to need to hold them to get them to set. So this might be a bit boring and I might turn the camera off once I can move again and uh, show you what it looks like when they're all glued. So there we are, that's them glued in. The next thing I'm going to do is I've printed out my film cells here and I'm going to cut them out very very carefully reinforce them with some toothpicks and then put them on in place and then we'll be done which is good because this is due today and there we are we are ready for the photo shoot they're not glued down I'm going to do a little bit more once I've taken the photo shoot but I'm out of time so I need to get this done um, that's worked out really really well though it's exactly the effect I was looking for with the film cells capturing the chaplain rushing across firing his gun and then continuing so i'm going to take some pictures now and enter them send them over to shane and uh, i'll put those pictures up in the vlog as well as i don't normally do that but i'll put the pictures up in the vlog after this clip to show you what they look like So 
this is a very important element of hobby time as well. Fixing things for Rosie. <laughs> so I just thought I'd film while I'm doing this. So we've got a jigsaw piece that the top has fallen off of. This was a gift from a friend. Uh, they had to leave the country, so they gave us a load of their stuff. And it is a, one of the horrible histories ones. It is the Romans. So I just need to glue the picture back onto the cardboard backing. Get that nicely lined up because otherwise obviously it won't work and then now that it's nicely lined up i'll put some weight on it and leave that and the second thing is even more important which is rosie's birthday time hair thing whatever you call one of these so once again exactly the same very quick fix with a bit of pva glue spread over it it may come off again but it'd be easy, easy enough to keep repairing it rather than using a lot of super glue and uh, to, to maybe make it more permanent. But yeah, so we'll just put some PVA over the whole of this, press it down, and again, put some weight on top of it and leave it. So there we are, a little bit of a insight into some of the stuff that I do continually repairing things for Rosie that takes some of my time up. I think that's, she's gonna be very happy. She's just gone for a nap, so I think she's gonna be very, very happy when she wakes up to find those two things are fixed. Okay, so the next day, that's dried. It's worked well enough, but I think you can see just how much is missed. So what I've been doing is I've taken some measurements and uh, drawn on the outline based on the measurements, and I will then fill in the gaps based on more measurements, just using a pencil at this stage, and that will give me the exact positions and, and spacings and everything that I need. So yeah, I'm just gonna work on that. I'll bring you back when I've finished. I'm pleased I did this pressing because it's given me the initial, the start of a 10, but now I do think I need to do the measuring and marking stage. So yeah, I'll get back to you when, uh, when that's done and I'll show you what it looks like. Right, so finally, my clamps have arrived. I ordered six more of these, and I've got two huge center ones, which you'll see later on. And what we're gonna do now, these big ones here in the middle, but they're not in shot for the camera. So what we're gonna do now, I'll crouch down next to the roof. So we've got these clamps, and what we need to do, let me show you what to do. Can you see this? Can you twirl that? Yeah. So you need to twirl that as far as you can. And what these are gonna do is they're gonna hold these um, square. They're gonna hold these at 90 degrees. So keep twirl, 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 fast as you can fast as you can uh, okay we'll do it like that and when you've done that one you do this one um, and they're going to hold the whole thing square and then we're going to drill through and we're going to screw and i'm going to just screw at this stage i'm not going to glue i don't think so we're just going to get that done so i'll drill some guide holes and then i'll screw and the reason i've got more clamps than you might think i need is i'm going to put a clamp on the top and then a clamp on the bottom <laughs> You've done it far enough, well done. So now this one, there we are. See, Ruru's getting, getting good at this. Let's make sure that's perfectly aligned. There we are. Right, keep going. Twizzle, twizzle it round. So yeah, we'll get those all done. I've, got, I've put on two at this corner, which are my initial ones. There are those giant center ones that we'll do later on. Um, and I've put one on that corner, so we need to put one more on the far corner and then turn it over and put the other ones on the bottom. And then what we'll do is we'll turn the camera back on and we'll have a look at the middle bit, which is going to be the most fun. So well done, Rosie. You keep doing that and then we'll get the final one done together and then we'll turn it over and do the rest. And then we'll do some drilling. Are you excited for the drilling? Uh -huh. What does drilling mean? Well, it puts holes in the wood and those holes are there to guide the screws so the screws don't split the wood because you don't want split wood, do you? No. You're having fun with that? Oh, you're doing it the wrong way now. Keep going this way. That's okay. That's it. Good girl. Right, we'll turn the camera off, we'll get the rest of these done and uh, bring you back for the next step. Right, so we've got all the corners done and what we're going to do now is we're going to tighten up this. So we've marked the centre together, haven't we? Enough. It's close enough. And what you're going to do is you're going to tighten that up as tight as you can. Tight as you can. Get, get your strength into it. There we are. Very good. Cool. I can only just put a little bit more. And now you're going to tighten this one as well. And then what we'll do is we'll put the clamp on the other side and then we're going to be ready. Oh, you're undoing it. Do it the other way. Sorry. That's okay. Then we're going to, going to do the other, uh, other side and then we're going to be ready for drilling and screwing. 
So uh, yeah, good progress, excellent. And I do love doing this, this sort of hobby and with you. This is awesome, Rosie, big thumbs up. Oh. Right, so Rosie is about to use a driver for the first time. So I've marked on the wood where we're gonna drill. Can you see that line? Yes. And what we need to do, don't panic. What we need to do is just put a, hold it here and make sure it's actually in correctly, which it isn't. There we are. Make sure it's gonna go straight. Don't look what you're doing, you need to look what you're doing at all times. So, we're going to drill in. Push, push, push. There we are, you've done it. So you're going to do the next one? Yeah? I, I nearly got hair in my eyes. Oh dear. Even. Do you want to do the next one? Yes please. Right, push. Ready? Yes. I'm looking a little bit. Good girl. There we are. So we have two screws, two holes drilled here, which is cool. Well done, Rosie. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the rest of the drills, and then we're going to drill a countersink because I want these countersunk, and I'll show you how that works. And oh. then we'll put the screws in. Yay! Okay. No. He's very excited. So oh, don't punch the microphone, love. That'll have made a very bad noise on the on the on the camera. A bit of a, a microphone punch there if you were, if your head just got blown off. Sorry about that. So yeah, so we're going to drill the rest of the holes. Going to put two screws in each. Um, and then we will um, we'll bring you back when we come to the next step. Okay. Right, all the screw, all the holes are drilled, and what we're going to do now is we're going to use the countersink bit. So what this does is it builds a little kind of like divot in there, which the head of the screw can hide in to make is it flush. It very loud? No, it's not very loud. Let me show you how it will go. So you put this on. It takes a lot of pressure though. And you just push it in. Ah, like that. And you see, you've got a little hole. So we actually need Big. more than that. There we are. So we're going to go around and do that for all of the screw Dad. holes. Yeah, so do you, want to, do you want to help push? No, thanks. Are you I sure? Don't want to, no, because I, I don't like to see it too big. Okay. So yeah, we're going to go around and drill out countersink holes for all of our holes. And then we're going to screw the screws in, which you're most excited about, aren't you, love? You got my pencil again. Right, say bye-bye to the camera. Bye-bye. Okay, so all the countersink has been done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drive our, our dr screws in. So do you want to help, Rue? I need to make that tighter. Why is that set on strength I don't two? Want to get my, 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 my ah, there we are. I need to make it even tighter. No, I don't want to help. There we are. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put screws and there, here. there, screws in each of these holes, and then we have a frame. And then we need to work on the legs. We're not going to do that now. You've got a Christmas party going on for your teddies, haven't you? Hmm? Yeah. It's Christmas! It's nearly Christmas. Yes. So yeah, once we've done this, I'm going to go and have a Christmas party with a bunch of Rosie's teddies. So we're yeah, going to put yeah, yeah, yeah. more, yes, more screws in and then we'll be done. So I'll probably do another clip when we take the clamps off and then we'll be wrapping up. <laughs> yeah. Well, Rosie's gone to get ready for her party and I'm going to be removing the clamps and uh, that's the frame done which is really cool so the next thing is going to be to work out um, the length of the legs and get them cut and screwed in place um, and I'll show you another thing that I've purchased recently there we are because I've got the wheels that are going to go on the bottom of the legs so I've bought those so here are the wheels so they're pretty cool, they're locking, locking wheels, um, and that locks the rotation at as well. So when you lock them, it locks the rotation in as well, which is really, really cool. So I've got enough of those to go on the bottom of the legs. Um, so yeah, the next step, as I say, work out the height, get the legs cut, and I'll probably put the legs inside. I was considering sitting them on here, but I don't think that's the right idea. But what we have is, a frame and I'm pretty pleased with that it's pretty square as you can see and uh, yeah I think that looks well uh, Rosie's gone to prepare for her party so I better pack, uh, tidy up here otherwise I'll be late for the party so uh, yeah I'll bring you back for the next step on this project whenever we get to it as I say it will be the legs uh, but it probably be it might be tomorrow it might be due on Sunday I'm not sure it's Saturday today I might do a little bit of this more tomorrow
but I've finished marking in where the balls go. And in retrospect, it probably would have been easier just to have done this in the first place. But it doesn't really matter. It's not going to impact the, the, uh, the end result. And if this had been a totally flat surface without me having to carve it down, it probably would have worked very well because the problems were the slightly uneven base. So what we've got is cross-hatched areas where there's going to be walls and everywhere else is open. Having said that, I have actually just noticed I've missed something. I haven't done these bits. <laughs> so I better get those bits in. They'll be going in here and here. So I'll get those marked in. But yeah, apart from that, it's done. And uh, that won't take uh, long for me to mark in. And then I'll bring you along for how I'm going to do the next step, which I'm a little bit, I'm going to at the moment about, um, I know what I want to do, but I don't know what I want to do next. So uh, yeah, I'll, um, I'll bring you along for the next step very shortly. This is going to be a fun build, but I think it's going to take quite a long time, which is what seems to always happen with my TCU builds. I've just managed to get the tower in. That was just a case of holding it in, um, in place while the, um, while the building was on top and then very carefully lifting the building off and drawing around it. So that's done. Um, and what I'm going to do now, move these out of the way, is I'm going to start on a process that's going to take me probably a little while. Oh, that's a big rumble of thunder. Ooh. Don't know if that picked up on my microphone, but that was a big crash of thunder. Um, I'm going to do something that's going to take a little while. Oh, everything's going wrong. <laughs> which is cutting out floor tiles. So I wasn't sure which way I was going to go on this. Actually, let's just put that back on and I'll talk about what my thinking is. So part of me thought about raising, building up the floor, the walls slightly. Um, and I might still do that with a little bit of foam and then have it so that you sit the building on top. And when you take the building off, you do have the... Um, you do have like the floor plan and the walls raised slightly. Uh, so that's one thought I've got, because what I want to have is it's playable inside. Um, and then what I would do is have the cladding on the outside go down over a deep, so maybe have a one centimeter um, foam on the floor uh, for, the, for the walls and have one centimeter extra height on the cladding on, on the building that lifts off and that's how you hold it on. So I probably will still do that because I think that'll make it easier to use as a, a playable area and what have you. But I also want to have something inside, some, some basically what I want is slabs. I want this to be slabbed, because uh, that's how I, I, I think I want to do it. Um, so, so yeah, to do that, I'm gonna need to cut out lots and lots of squares and then glue them in place. And like I say, I want to do this using very basic techniques with tools that anyone can get. So it's gonna be using the same cardboard as I've used for this, um, a sharp knife, and the only special tool I'm using is my safety ruler, and that's because I like my fingers. And I would always recommend that you'll buy yourself a good safety ruler if you're doing any hobbying, it's just the best thing to do. Now, it could be that I change my mind on this and I go for a mud floor, because I have kind of got this a concept in mind for this as being something potentially for Harad in terms of SBG, so like a desert style uh, building and it could be that I change my mind entirely and don't do floor slabs but I am going to have some floor slabs in some places so I'm going to start cutting them up and I might then change my mind and use grout and do a grout base but I don't know. One of the reasons why I want to do this is cardboard warps a lot um, and so uh, if you're putting grout on it's just going to warp so um, just to avoid that I might just go for the slabs and kind of pretend that they've found some stone somewhere to make some floor slabs for their home. A lot of chattering, a lot of thinking. I'm going to get to slicing um, and I'll bring you in. I want to do a few. I'll show you what they look like and I'll show you how I'm doing it. But I'm just going to get stuck in now and make some up. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I am going to do my best to create these walls as um, with blocks. Now, I'm going to use... If I do that, I'm not going to use bubbly white foam because that's annoying. I've got lots and lots of rough cuts of green or blue foam, the harder stuff, which is easier to cut and easier to, uh, to work with. So, um, so I'll probably make the walls out of that. But there's some quite complex shapes, so it could get quite interesting that. But anyway, enough chattering. I'm going to start cutting things out. Well, what I've got is two strips here that I've just cut out of uh, the uh, first stuff that I actually trimmed off of that, um, that piece of cardboard. So I've done it two centimetres wide and I've put little marks every two centimetres. And those ones I'm not particularly measuring. I just want it roughly, because I don't mind it being a little bit artisanal. And what we're doing 
I'm just slicing them up so I'll end up with quite a few tails like this and I can get them stuck on and see how many more I need and just limit the effort and the work. I don't want to just cut and cut and cut and get thousands and then find out I only need a few hundred. So that's what I thought I'd do. So I'm just uh, going to work on these first, get all these cut out and then I'll start gluing them down and we'll see how many more we need. So yeah, it might be that this doesn't take as long as I feared. But we shall see. It's a nice simple technique. Right, I'll get the rest of these sliced out and then I'm gonna to have to stop on this for this evening, I think. I've got other things I need to get done. More Christmas things. It's the last week before the 1st of December, so we need to be ready. So yeah, I will uh, I will get this done and I'll bring you back when I come to this project. Turn the camera on, show me gluing these down, probably the next thing that I'll film for this. But let's see, you might be doing the walls, you never know. I certainly don't. Right, it's time for another Christmas project. Another one that's going to involve me doing some spray painting and Angela doing some tying. So what we've got here, um, several weeks back now, myself and Rosie went out for a walk and we collected the cones that we've already done and we also collected these sticks. And Angela is going to look to tie them into bundles which will then be hung on the tree. So the first thing I'm going to do before I put any colour on them is I'm going to spray paint them black because you prime everything you, prime, um, you want to have metallic, priming it black makes it better. So I'll do a coat on this side, let it dry, doesn't take very long to dry and then turn them over and do the other side. Um, and after that then I'll split them up into two colours. Um, I really want some purple spray but I don't have any so uh, depending on what the weather's like in the morning I might leg it out and uh, get some purple spray tomorrow with Rosie. I'm not sure how that will go otherwise it'll be doing its red and silver but uh, we shall see. So let's get these sprayed. Right there we are, right there we are, so I will let that dry, turn them all over and do another coat and I'll bring you back when I get to the colour. I'm in the middle of an epic thunderstorm right now, which is pretty cool, uh, so yeah, if you hear that in the background or see flashes that's what that is. So I'm pretty happy with how uh, Gump is coming on, uh, I, I'm very sad that I can't show off one of the cool things because my camera isn't picking it up, so maybe I'll try and take a picture. Um, if I can get a longer exposure on it. Uh, but basically I've managed to make the three and his eyes glow in the dark and they really do glow in the dark. But when I turn the lights off, unfortunately, as I say, the camera just isn't, the video camera isn't picking it up. Uh, but yeah, so the colors I've used, um, uh, I, I actually went up uh, several colors on the, uh, on, on kind of like the dried, the loincloth and the dried grass, um, including, um, I did canvas, um, and then I did middle stone and then I ended up um, using yellow ochre, I think. Um, and that's worked really, really well. Uh, so yeah, that was good. Um, the, I've, I've done his little, uh, the, the little kind of like egg right in here. If you uh, pause and zoom in, you might see that. Um, and uh, then I painted the uh, leaves just in a middle green. So in just in a normal green and that's turned out really nicely as well. So yeah, now I'm going to be looking at working on the base. So uh, next time I use this, uh, I look at this, uh, we'll be looking at the base. Um, so yeah, I've got some ideas for that as well. But uh, yeah, really pleased with the, with, the, uh, with the glow in the dark. Really pleased with it. Hi, right, so next morning, early and uh, I'm going to spray these ones red. So yeah, let's get this done.
that red isn't sticking all that well to this wood so I'm going to let that go off and uh, come back and do another coat a bit later hopefully it'll be good enough that's a bit of a shame really but I'm going to get some different cardboard and um, spray paint the other one silver um, yeah spray paints the uh, cardboard well doesn't it <laughs> but yeah not so much the wood we'll see how it looks after about an hour Yesterday I sliced up the two narrow offcuts and both of them gave 64 uh, squares so that means I've got 128 squares in this little pile here and what I'm now going to do in a little bit of time I've got is I'm going to start to tile in from here. Now I'm probably going to do a lintel here, a long thin one so I'm not going to tile right up to the edge of the wall. Um, what I am going to do is just a little bit of PVA, that's too much PVA and just start there so yeah I'll put some music on and uh, you can watch me have some fun for some value of fun now once I've got a few on I'll start weighting them down because I don't want them to lift um, and once I've and if I find that I've got any love cuts that are needed like here I will come back and do those another time now, now comes the most important question is do we offset them or do I put them in line I think I put them in line like that right so I'm going to uh, yeah, put some music on and you can watch as I place 128 floor tiles Well there we are, that took just over 20 minutes uh, and my battery ran out, well it was flashing on me as I got to the end, so that was a good, a good amount of time. So I'm going to let that dry, it won't take very long and then we'll, well, we'll continue on. You can see if that was 64 tiles, I don't need that many more. So uh, yeah, particularly if I'm only going to do this, this room. I might do the whole floor, I've not decided yet, but I'm going to see what I think when I look at that when I take those weights off. Uh, but yeah. That didn't take as long as I thought. I was, I was worried that was gonna take absolutely ages. Well, there we are, as I said, in the intro, an absolutely epic week, got loads done. Uh, hobbying with Rosie is always a pleasure. Lots and lots of other fun things done with Rosie. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, been a good week all round. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this video, but I better get on. Uh, Rosie is outside playing in the snow. It looks like you are having fun. Are you throwing snowballs at Dutch? Yeah. Poor Dutch. <laughs> Very cool. And is calling for me and she will not take no for an answer. So yeah, I'm gonna get myself outside and go and have some fun. And then it's gonna be time for our one ring game, which will be at the beginning of next week's vlog. It is really going well, that really good fun. I really recommend it. If you've got a kid and want to get them into, uh, into role playing, it's, it's just, well, it's, it's Lord of the Rings, isn't it? So. Brilliant setting. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. Get involved in my Finish of the Year Strong Challenge. Don't be shy. Say hello down below if you don't want to. That's fine. Thank you for watching up until this point. I really appreciate it. And I wrap up by saying, as I always do at the end of all my vlogs, um, thank goodness for the hostages that have been released the last couple of days. That's fantastic news. But if any of you are impacted directly or indirectly by the horrific wars, both in Ukraine and in Israel, then my thoughts do go out to you and anyone you know who may be in that horrible situation. And to everyone, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.